Welcome back to Zawana Oriwage. We're talking with Chief uh, Rondalyn Kirby. And uh, a, a, another question that, uh, that I was wondering about, um, Kenneth McCumber worked on this file before, previously before the election. Um, I'm sure just with the experience that he had with all the teaching that uh, he did when he was working in, in that field, um, how has this helped you in understanding the file and what advice is he giving you to be able to, to explain more um, to community members who have questions? Well, all of us are responsible to update the table um, on the progress of each of our files. So we've, we've been updated uh, since the beginning of the project. We do have several of our staff from the different units that work um, in, in different areas within the bridge project. So we're constantly being updated. And uh, so I've been well aware of the issues that have been going on uh, mm -hmm. over the past uh, several months. Okay. You know, this this past year, you heard a lot of um, about the the issue from of the union non union, especially from the community meetings. The last two community member meetings, this issue was brought up. How did the Mohawk Council get involved in this? Because it's really not a Mohawk Council issue with regards to whether this job is union or non union. Or so, how did that come about? Well, I think part of it might have been um, that. Some of the men who are from 7-Eleven were uh, received letters from the union saying that you know their their union books would be in jeopardy if they had continued, mm -hmm. and that was the reason that uh, nine or so had left the mm -hmm. job. Uh, we do know because it was a non-union job, right? Mm -hmm. okay. It was declared a non-union job. Okay. So, so men that were of the union were working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so that people understand. Yeah. And, and they left. Um, okay. A few of them stayed on um, and from what I know four of them have been suspended for two years from the 7-Eleven union. That's how um, this issue with Jacques Dubois coming you know got involved because uh, the guys that did left didn't they go back to the union and say well w you know what do you want us to do like it's a non-union job but we should as iron workers be able to work in our own community I mean do you know? And it was their responsibility I know that mm -hmm. they were all sent uh, letters to appear at a hearing and they did and I think Several of them were fined two hundred dollars for working on a non-union job, mm -hmm. um, and that you know that's part of the problem in the community, and and not, I guess not having, knowing all of the issues that have been going on, mm -hmm. we did approach the men that were working at the uh, at the bridge in the spring of two thousand and nine. We were looking to have a meeting at the um, Legion Hall on April 29th, I believe where the men would were going to be asked if they wanted information on the union yes or no and if you mm -hmm. if you really wanted to be to have the union there yes or no and if no why because i think it's you know it would be irresponsible on our part if we didn't inform uh, men you know the concerns uh, of not being in a union mm -hmm. i think uh, everyone knows that the majority of men here in the community have been uh, involved in the union mm -hmm. for many many years in different cities and there are some plus right. sides to that. So I think it was important, and especially for the really young men that are, are working there now, mm -hmm. um, th you know, there is going to be jobs after the bridge is finished, and, and then where do you go with that? One question I, I, I have, Rhonda, is, um, and, um, uh, you know, to your knowledge, uh, is it possible for the community at large, all the iron workers, past, present, and also future, to be able to create a, a union um, that uh, is equal or rivals all the other unions like 7-Eleven? And uh, would the council support uh, a union within our own community, like a Gunawage or a, uh, a Mohawk? Union is that hmm. something that um, that is, is that possible, up, feasible? <laughs> or? No, I, I think it has, and I really don't know all of what is involved. I, I think we we're too small of a community. Although the majority of men, um, all are are iron workers, so I'm not really comfortable mm -hmm. saying you know mm -hmm. what yeah, we question. should do. And technical. I know that's been talked about. But what was the big argument? Like, was is there a difference between having? A union job versus a non-union job. Like, is it to say that union are, have all the cards that they need and they're better trained, or like, what was the big? I'm not. Big a, I'm not an expert in this area, but from yeah. what I know, being in a union, you do have um, certification for the different skills in in the area that's mm -hmm. needed. 
Uh, you are required to take safety courses. And also being in the union, you, you are paid, um, you are paid scale. You are okay. guaranteed to have uh, your- A certain pay. A certain pay and, mm -hmm. and your benefits in that. So I think on a non-union job, you're not necessarily guaranteed all of those benefits. Okay. Do you think at the end of the day that this was about money, that they decided not to make it a union job? I'm not really sure what their intent was, okay. you know, but certainly our intent is to make sure that uh, our men are paid fairly. Mm -hmm. What position did the Mohawk Council take? Because a lot of time, a lot of, over the year you've heard, while well, the Mohawk Council is in the middle of this whole union, non-union issue, you know, just stay here and now. What position did you guys actually take? Well, we're not... We're not taking either side. I think we've we've been open to listen to both sides. Mm -hmm. We have the union, then the the non-union. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've taken into consideration the the letters and um, from the Mohawk Bridge Consortium. So it's a huge project to be involved in. It's just a huge project to work on. Mm -hmm. Finally, before we wrap it up, um, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, now we're heading into phase. Two phase B, if phase you will. B. Can you just give us a quick update? And there was some rumor in the community that the Mohawks were being left out of the the tendering process, but that's not true. That was more of a, a wording, a document issue. It's called the tripartite agreement, um, and it for part A, um, the MCK was involved, but it seems that uh, we're not clearly identified in what uh, the MCK wants in the tripartite agreement for phase B. So that's being currently looked at. Okay. The bids closed on February 5th, and we know that there are three uh, contractors who have made bids. From what I know, the assessment will be done by April 1st or that week. These were uh, closed tenders. Are they all from from the from Gunawagi or are they from, mm -hmm. from other question. places? Uh, well, the Mohawk Structural Iron Workers, which is Wayne, um, it's actually called um, S. Sokadek, uh, MSI, Mohawk Structural Iron Workers, Palmer Lowe, and uh, Simard Boudry. And from what I also know is that uh, the other two companies have affiliations with uh, uh, entities here within the community to make sure that uh, we have our Mohawk content working on the bridge. And that's really what our role is too, to make sure that uh, we have Mohawk Iron Workers there first, mm -hmm. whether they're from um, you know, 7-Eleven, Union, or 361, or 40. So there was MSI, and MSI is formerly Mohawk Bridge Consortium, which was MBC. So MBC turned into MSI, MSI. and MSI is also known as MSI, meaning Mohawk Self-Insurance. So now you have Mohawk Self-Insurance, and then you have Mohawk Structural, Structural iron, workers. iron Workers. Okay, so that's the first one. Now there's, the second is who? Palmer Lowe. Pomerlo and, and Simard Boudry. Okay, Simard Boudry. And they're both connected here? Like how so? Like what other companies? I didn't know that. Well, we know that there are individuals who um, have partnered mm -hmm. with these companies and they are ensuring that the, uh, when the tendering does go out, whoever gets the contract, and that's our responsibility again, to make sure that we have um, qualified Mohawk workers. Do you know who the they partnered with though? Mm -hmm. like? It's one individual who has, has an MOU with the two companies. But I've been waiting for documentation because, you know, mm. I want to make sure too. And I've been saying it all along that we know that there's uh, other contractors who are affiliated with those two companies. Okay. Um, Rhonda, is there anything else you think is important to add on, on this issue? I mean, there's a lot of talk in the community. There always is, but now is the opportunity to give at least Mohawk Council's side of things. Well, I think we're all trying to uh, to be fair. Of course, all of the, the men that sit on council certainly have a lot more experience than I will ever have mm -hmm. in this area. It's it's truly been uh, a learning experience, and it's it's very interesting to work on. Mm -hmm. What about you personally, though? Like this this is a new file for you, but how has it been working on this file in the midst of a lot of controversy this year? Well, it, it's really a challenge, um, and you really have to be able to understand all the different facets that are involved in this project. You know, what, what is union? What does that mean? What does the CCQ cards mean? What is safety? Um, you know, so it's really important, and it, it could be discouraging for anybody because you really don't know at times what's going on. Mm 